So you just started doing graffiti, or maybe you've been doing graffiti for quite some time, and for some weird reason you decided to pick a name with double letters. You're sitting there, you're sketching, and you're thinking, oh my god, why, why did I choose this name? It sucks. I hate my double letters. Whatever shall I do? Well, today, that's exactly what we're going to be covering. We're going to be talking about double letters and what exactly the issue is with them, and kind of the hurdles they end up causing. And we're also going to look at some incredible graffiti artists in order to see how they solve this very issue. Now, the issue a lot of people have with double letters is they tend to be really bland, right? People have them in their piece and they just feel like, I, I just got two bland letters here, man. I don't know what to do with this. And some double letters just don't work well together, a lot of people feel. You know, they feel like their double letter pushes the other one away. For example, in the case like double L's. And if ever you're having that issue where you feel like one letter is pushing another one too far away, it doesn't even matter if it's a double letter or not. It could be two totally different letters. That's a negative space management issue. Another issue a lot of people kind of tell me about that they have with double letters is the fact that those two letters flow so much together to where none of the other letters really seem to fit in. Almost as if the piece is just the double letters and everything else falls to the wayside. Now on the opposite side of that same coin, people tell me how when they change one of the two letters, then it seems like all their flow falls apart. Nothing quite works out anymore and it just looks way too different. These are the typical problems people have with double letters and really the major offenders. So let's check out our first double letter piece right here, which is beautiful. I, I love this piece, all right? <laughs> this piece is gorgeous. But you know what? We're not here to admire the entire piece. We're just trying to learn about double letters. So let me rein this in a little bit. The amount of letter uniformity that double letters provides you is ridiculous and it's completely free. Like you, you have a cheat code for flow. So in graffiti, line uniformity and similarity is typically the glue that holds pieces together. We can see that in this piece here where he's got a lot, and I mean a lot of similar line. This is just an absolute constant in the piece. But while line uniformity and similarity is great for adding flow, letter uniformity and similarity is what makes letters look related to one another. It adds a sense of cohesion between the letters. And while it may not be as abundant as line uniformity and similarity, it still is really pivotal. Now, if you thought your letters were blend, if you thought that you had to make them super fancy, this is evidence that you don't have to make your double letters super fancy. That's something a lot of graffiti artists fall into the trap of. They see the double letters and they want to overdo it. They want to overcomplicate. They want to overcompensate. You don't want to fall into that trap. I specifically chose this piece because he's got nothing crazy going on in the fill-in. And the letters are very simple, but extremely well done. And it's a great example of how you don't need to overdo it. All he did was just get the positive increase of flow from these two being uniform. And he decided, you know what? I want the first E to be a little bit more stout because I don't want it to be as big or have as much weight as the second E. So this causes him to build the other two letters beside the first E around that thought process. Let me make the C bigger in order to compensate for the lack of weight. Let me take the S and do the same thing with that. Now a five letter name like he's got here, typically the letter spread of that is you have the heaviest letter in the center or you have heavy letters on the sides. That's kind of what he went for here. He went for a pattern where he has the first letter large, second letter small, third letter large, fourth letter small, fifth letter large. And this isn't to say that the second E is tiny, but it's certainly smaller than the other three large letters. And this works out really well because double letters have a tendency to weigh a lot because people focus on them. That is part of visual weight after all. So even though this one is small, you'll definitely notice that duplicate E because there's another E there. So despite its shorter stature, it still has a little bit more weight than what you might think it has. Now you could have just as easily also have made both E's really large and then the other three letters really small. That would have worked as well. But this is just his stylistic choice that he decided to make and it worked out beautiful. And we're pretty much seeing the same thing happen again here where he's got the larger three letters with the C, S, R, and then he's got really small but uniform double E's. Now because this E is a smaller size, if we were to take these letters and just stand them perfectly upright, then he would have a huge amount of negative space right above the letter E. It wouldn't have gotten filled. So what does he do? He slightly alters the letter structure and the angle of the letter structure of the letter C in order to shoot over to the right a little bit in order to go ahead and help fill in that negative space. He does a very similar thing with the letter positioning of the lowercase e, very slightly tilting it to the right hand side for the same reason. Because that's going to allow the lowercase e to nudge itself really beautifully in this little triangular space that the slightly slanted S creates, going slightly up into the left, at least on the left side of the actual S's body. Because then the right side of the S does what the C does and it goes up into the right, which then creates the same scenario for the second E that the first E had. So now he's using slight letter structure and letter positioning tricks in order to help these two double letters fit into the piece nicely. We got a lot of graffiti to look at today, so I gotta move on from this guy's piece, but I love his work. Once again, make sure to check out all the people in the description down below. Then we got Nexer. My god, man, where, where do I start? 
start with this, man. <laughs> His work is just too nice. It's way too dope, but yeah, let me read myself in because we're here to talk about double letters, not to fangirl over how beautiful this piece is. Now, we can imagine every fundamental. All right, all right, hold up. You guys know me. I love fundamentals. If you play a drinking game of how many times I say fundamentals, you're probably going to end up, you know, croaking by the end of the video. But let me break it down for you. You got a bunch of fundamentals, right? Elements of art, line shape, form, belly space, color, texture, graffiti, art form, specific fundamentals, letter structure, name, space, management, letter name, weight, letter name, positioning, and flow. I got tutorials on all those and even published books. You can go and check those out. But if we imagine all these fundamentals on a number line, it becomes really easy to track the influence. Now, the numbers on this number line are a little bit arbitrary, but follow me along here. So here's a little number line. As you can see, we got flow as our target fundamental. That's really the one that we're trying to watch the influence of. The other ones are going to help us track what's happening here. When you have a duplicate letter, using letter uniformity and similarity is going to give you more positive points towards flow. But doing that might cause negative space management issues depending on your letters, right? It also depends on your letters. Keep that in mind. It also can very easily cause some letter name weight issues because double letters tend to have a lot of weight. So what does this tell us? Well, this right here lets us know what our options are, right? And you can choose between any of these for your solutions here, right? You can either A, alter letter structure to benefit and compensate for these, bringing them back up you can use letter name positioning to once again do the same which would help compensate for this or you can make slight alterations to one of the double letters in order to knock flow down just a little bit because we have more ways in order to increase flow like line uniformity and similarity but it'll also help compensate this just a little bit but this is all assuming that you're doing the fundamentals right and this is all assuming that you understand the fundamentals and how they function in relation to one another so you more advanced graffiti artists you guys will be able to do this but if you newer graffiti artists I highly recommend the first solution which is keep things Things simple. For the love of God, do not overcomplicate it. We can see right here that not overcomplicating things works. It, <laughs> it works. That is a lowercase e. It is clear to see it. It's really simplistic. That's part of the power of a double letter. And this is partially the artist's responsibility to become okay mentally with not overcomplicating it. Overcoming that hurdle and having the skill, trust me, having the skill and the knowledge of art to know when not to overcomplicate things. That's as much of a skill as being able to draw the letter itself and it's a skill that he definitely flexes here because look at how dope this n is right so he's definitely added a lot of style to the n the x is massive the thing is huge and the r is as well but notice the e's are just your basic print font e nothing crazy about it and this is something that he does once again the same exact premise but here we're seeing something slightly different than the previous entries right the e's are the same size as some of the other letters or at least relatively speaking because the train actually blocks a large part of the letter R, the R's weight is all right there, which makes it pretty much the same size as the previous two E's. And the N is the same size as the E, so, you know, that's a thing that's happening. But he's putting all of his weight here in the X, which if you remember in the beginning of the video, we talked about how in a five-letter name, a lot of times you'll see people make the center letter the anchor letter. And that's kind of what we're seeing here. But even scene, if, look, if scene shows us that it's okay to go ahead and have a duplicate letter just be identical to the previous, then I don't want to hear it in the comments all right you can easily make this work look at how nice this looks but notice how he's using line uniformity and similarity in order to add blow to the letters so some of you guys were saying hey john look when, when i have two e's that are similar nothing else looks like it flows right with those two letters use this as a perfect example even little tiny things like this that helps that goes a long way to help this little bit that he's got coming down here which flows here and here also flows right there with the e and then it carries throughout the entire e which then what does it do? Leads us right to the next E, right? So this all kind of combines together. It all comes together to make a beautiful image for us. And we can really see that in this piece. There, there's a scene pun to be made there, but <laughs> I'm not going to be the one to do it. So he's using line uniformity and similarity through the S and the N in order to kind of make them flow with the two E's, despite the case that this may not have the most letter uniformity and similarity. So it still works out beautifully. Pancakes or waffles? This might seem like a random question, but I'm going to choose waffle because this piece is dope. All puns aside, I love this piece. But once again, I, I gotta rein myself in. I so badly want to just talk about the whole entire name and I can't. This video sucks. But check out the double F's here. Typically, this is a letter structure that tends to push things further away. You could literally take an alien letter that's not even on this earth and plop it right here for the second F and the letter F would still say, screw you, I'm pushing you further away. So there's a lot of different ways you can go and handle this. One way a lot of people like to handle F's is they like to say this is the baseline that I'm drawing here. They like to put the F at a tilt 
and then take the next letter and put that at a tilt as well. That's a really great way to handle the letter, especially depending on what the letter is. It works out beautifully. And we see him do exactly this. Now, he takes the first F, and once again, he puts it on a tilt, takes the second F, puts it on a tilt. What happens here? It creates a little bit of a pocket right here between the two. Now, he's got to fill that, and luckily for him, the letter F is great at doing so because, well, he's got not only this bit of the structure that can pop down and fill that gap, but he also has that part of the F that can fill that gap. And on the back of the F, he can take this basic box and protrude it through the stem of the M, or the M what? The F. I know what a letter looks like, and plop that over there, and he's good to go. But let's say you don't have the luxury of having double F. Let's say you have double L, for example. Letter L hates other letters. What does he do? He lowers the letter down ever so slightly, and or you can also raise the next letter up in combination with that to have the L sneak itself right underneath the next letter. That's really an easy way to handle double letters. You gotta think about letter positioning. And double F's and double L's tend to be the hardest double letters to handle because of that fact, because they push things further away. As for something like double O's, like our friend Boogie here, that's a lot easier to handle. And the reason for this is because they don't they, they, they don't bother anybody. The double O's, they, they, they get along really nicely with literally every single letter in existence. The letter O is a very versatile letter. The rounded surface of the O allows you any point you want for letter uniform, oh, I'm sorry, line uniformity and similarity. You can choose any point on that thing and get line uniformity and similarity out of it. Rounded letters are very, very good with that. Just so happens that Boogie's got a full name of rounded letters. Lucky for him, wish I didn't choose the name I picked. Let's just go ahead and pick a different color, but you got the B that comes around this way and right along, I'm about to draw it for you here in a second, right along this edge, the B and the O share a line. And that's known as a shared line tangent or a shared edge tangent. It's got various names. And that's when two lines of different subjects come together to meet at a point. Now, because rounded letters are round, they have a lot of different angles they can hit where you can put a shared line tangent. You just erase the shared line tangent right here, like Boogie did, and what do you have? Boom! Flow. This isn't a double letter, but to show an example of shared line tangents flowing with something that isn't rounded, we can look no further than the G right here with the I right there. They have a shared line tangent right there. So rounded letters literally can flow with pretty much anything you put them by, but that's more of a letter positioning tool that you can use where you take one letter and you make sure it's close enough in order to actually have that shared edge. Now one of the big issues with double O's, it's one of the more common double letters that you'll see in graffiti, is people, once again, they think it's too bland, it's too easy, but once again, if Boogie can do it. Literally, that is that is just a circle and another circle. If he can do that and it's dope, then you can too. And, and that's really the big struggle, right? A lot of people, they, they feel like either A, doing something this simplistic is beneath them, or B, they don't understand style threshold. Now, style threshold is a massive topic. We, are, we don't have time to get into it in today's video. But what I will say about it is it essentially is the stylistic level of one letter versus another letter. And as a result, it's the stylistic level of your whole name. One singular name, typically speaking, will have a certain threshold it functions between. So say, for example, you have a straight letter, you're typically speaking not going to have a wild style, you know, G with a wild style B, and then nothing else is wild style, everything else is a straight letter. That would break the style threshold. Now, suddenly, the two wild styles wouldn't look similar enough to anything else in the piece, and it wouldn't flow. That's what a style threshold does. It specializes in that. That's the whole purpose behind it, is to keep everything uniform and in unison. Now, there is ways to get around this, and we will see one, but the point is to say, that when you have double O's, the double O structure tends to have a low style threshold. And as a result, it kind of forces you to keep the other letters at a lower style threshold as well, as to not breach the style threshold of the double O. And that's typically the problem people have with double O's, is they want to kind of really expand their skills with the other letters, but they feel like the O is holding them back. They, they can't, they're confined to the double O. So how do you go about fixing that? Well, Boogie shows us that as well. There's two really great ways to go about this. We will look at both. The first is to just stylize everything. But this does require that you are an extremely advanced graffiti artist who understands not only all of graffiti's fundamentals, but you have a pretty firm understanding of some fine art fundamentals as well. Because you need to maintain a unified image despite all the individual letters not being unified. Keep in mind, once again, this is extremely advanced. So he's got a pretty stylistic B here, he's got a pretty stylistic O, and then a different O that looks nothing like the first one. It's literally the polar opposite, if you will. Followed by a G, followed by a crazy I, followed by an E right there. The way he gets away with this one is not only is he changing each individual structure, but everything is colored totally different. So you know it's not even meant to resemble one another. The only things that take these individual letters and make them into a unified word that you can read is negative space management and letter name positioning. You see, language in general, and pretty much every single dialect, works in such a way where different individual symbols or letters 
letters are positioned within a certain negative space threshold close to one another. That way they can make up a whole word. And then different words have a larger amount of negative space that allow the different words to be separate from one another. And that reads as an individual one cohesive sentence. Now in graffiti we're not making sentences, so we don't run large negative space. In graffiti we're making words, so we run really close negative space. So this allows us in order to go ahead and take different letters, stylize them to a massive degree, make them look very different from one another, and if our negative space, if our letter positioning is perfect, then that very different letter combination will read as one cohesive word. And that's what we're seeing here. Now the other and much more common and very practical way to go about a double O, or double letters in general, and not have them be really simple, is to just add style to them. Here's the thing about style threshold, right? Different letters have a base style threshold. Now, I gotta preface once again, this is some, this is some much more advanced stuff. New graffiti artists, keep it simple, all right? <laughs> this is, this part is for the advanced graffiti artists. I don't mean to exclude anybody, but I don't want you newer graffiti artists to try and run before you can walk. So for you more advanced graffiti artists, every single letter has a base style threshold. The letter O is a really low, simple style threshold. The issue is different letters react differently to style when style is injected into it. And as a result, different letters either skyrocket in style threshold when style is added, just the little, littlest bit of style too. Or certain letters don't really react all that much when a little bit of style is added to it. For example, if you add just a little hint of style to the letter R, not much happens as far as the style threshold is concerned. But if you take something like letter H, for example, letter O, for example, very much the letter O, if you add just the tiniest bit of style to it, its style threshold skyrockets really quickly. So in other words, you don't have to do very much at all to the letter O in order to make its style threshold more unified with other letters who have a higher base style threshold. So if this was a style threshold for each and every letter right here, we would say that letter O has a pretty low style threshold, and the letter R has a pretty high style threshold along with the letter E. Well, if we added just a little hint of style to the to the letter O, we'll just, once again, numbers are arbitrary, let's just say we added two points of style to the letter O, that thing would skyrocket up, and the letter O would suddenly be up here. However, if we added two points to the letter R, letter R would be there. You can see this is a much larger increase than the letter R has or the letter E would have. That's essentially a very archaic, simplistic visualization of how style threshold affects different letters. And that's exactly what allows us to get away with slightly adding style to both O's here in order to make them flow with the other letters in the name. And in the case of a lot of graffiti arts, especially newer ones, they once again don't have the knowledge or the skill in order to keep it simple just yet. And as a result, they overcompensate for the O, they add way too much style to it, and it ends up having way too much seasoning for the dish, like the O's have so much more style than all the other letters, and now none of the other letters flow with the letter O. And they run into the exact opposite problem where all the other letters look a lot more simplistic when compared to the O. So dudes, that pretty much wraps up today's video. This was all about double letters and how they function. But if you want to learn more about graffiti and its fundamentals, feel free to check out the best how to do graffiti tutorials right here in this playlist. Also, your guys' support on the books lately has blown my mind. Like literally, this has been, it's been a wild experience. And right now, just to kind of keep you guys up to date, I'm trying to make our bundle book, the books about basic letter structure and basic techniques, I'm trying to make that into a physical copy. And I'm currently in the process of writing a book about style in all art forms. So thank you guys for the support. I really do appreciate it. It means the world to me. If you want to check those out, I got them in the description down below. And dudes, if you want some more graffiti content, check out the videos here on the bottom of your screen. And I'll catch you guys back here next week. Thanks for watching.